Careful sailor I ever met. Careful, hell, he's compulsive. Every time he's been right there. Five o'clock, bang. Maybe something went wrong with his radio. Sea wind, this is Hilo Base. Come in. You don't understand. This is the second week I haven't been able to raise him. I've tried every night on the off chance. Last night was our regular Mr. Practice. Shoemaker, we share your concern, but we can't send a plane to an island a thousand miles away every time a yachtsman doesn't answer his radio. I'm telling you, these people are in trouble. What do you expect us to do? I expect you to go look for them. Where would you have a start? Where? Well, I think you could safely rule out Kansas City.
understand, because I want you to know that at this point, you're not being accused of any crime. Look, I'll tell you anything you want to know. What is the name of the boat you came to Hawaii on? Sea Wind. And whose boat is it? Mac and Muff Graham's. Where are Mac and Muff Graham? Their dinghy capsized while they were out fishing. They drowned. It was an accident. Jennifer Jenkins, I now have to advise you of your rights. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to... No, I want to tell you about it. I want to tell you exactly what happened. Buck, Dwayne Walker, you're under arrest. No kidding. Boat theft? That's it? How about jaywalking or ripping the tags off of mattresses for crying out loud? I know how you feel, Elliot, but we can't go for murder without bodies. Then find the bodies. We looked. He looked. I looked. We all looked. Damn near dug up the whole island. Do you really believe this fairy tale about a boat accident? Elliot, if we go for murder without bodies and we lose, they're free. We can never touch them again. Even if a hundred eyewitnesses pop out of the woodwork. They're murderers, Bill. And you know it. Boat theft. That's all we can prove. United States Federal Court is now in session. The Honorable Samuel King now presiding. Jennifer Jenkins and Buck Dwayne Walker, you've been found guilty of theft on the high seas. Jennifer, I sentence you to two years in federal prison and five years probation. Buck Walker, you've demonstrated your contempt for the law on numerous prior occasions. The court therefore sentenced you to the maximum term allowable, 10 years. You wanted to see me? My name's Kit Graham. I'm Mac's sister. I'm, uh, I'm sorry about your brother. I want to know what happened to him. It was an accident. I don't believe you. Mac didn't have accidents. You stole his boat that he loved. You repainted it. You took the name off. You murdered them. Didn't you? Tell me. Tell me.
Definitely human. Probably a woman. How many? Looks like just one. This isn't where we found it. We moved it here so the tide wouldn't get it. And put the top back on to keep it out of the rain. I can show you the exact spot. I marked it with a stick. So this piece of beach is out in the water, what? How long? Maybe three hours a day. So if you don't come walking along right when you did, chances are the bones wash into the lagoon at the next tide. Aloha evidence. Possibly forever. Make a believer out of you, man. It's her, all right. Muff Graham. If that's Muff Graham, then this is Muff Graham. No question. Not unless there's a parallel universe out there. There you go, baby. Vitamins to make you grow strong and tall. If the thing gets any bigger, it's gonna have to start paying rent. Shh. It'll hear you. <laughs> Can't scare me. It looks harmless, all right, but in Africa they call them strangler figs. They attach themselves to a big hardwood and suck the life right out of it. Sounds like some guys I know. Ha ha. Transglobe Travel, this is Helen speaking. Oh, hi, Sonny. Yeah, yeah, she's right here. Hi, Mom, what's doing? Really? Why? Well, what did it say? God. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll let you know, Mom. Don't worry. Yeah, I'll get back to you. Okay. Okay. Bye. What? Nothing. Come on, Jen. Really? Remember, I told you about those people on that island. The ones who had the accident disappeared. Where you went with that guy? Yeah. Well, they found one of the bodies. The woman. Her birds. Oh, God. I have to turn myself in at the criminal courts building. They're charging me and Buck with murder. Sorry, I'm late. I am Len Wineglass. Uh, Ted Jenkins. This is my sister Jennifer. Hi. And my mother, Sonny. Hi. Just some iced tea, please. I uh, read the material you sent over. Some pretty grisly accusations. Well, they're not true. Mom, before we jump in, I do have one question. Why me? You were recommended. Well, I'm basically a political attorney. Yeah, we know. Abby Hoffman. Chicago 7, Pentagon Papers. Jennifer's been unjustly accused. Isn't that political enough? Most of my clients are guilty. They freely admit doing what they're accused of. Then I'll be a refreshing novelty. Would you be willing to take a polygraph? Lie detector results aren't admissible in court, so why? Well, if we, uh, if we wanted them to, the prosecuting attorney would see them. So would you. Is your true name Jennifer Jenkins? Yes. Do you reside currently at 635 Evergreen Street, Fairmont? Yes. Did you know Muff and Mac Graham? Yes. Did you participate in any way in causing the disappearance of Muff or Mac Graham? No. 
Did you participate in any type of plan to cause harm to Muff or Mac Graham? No. Were you present when Muff Graham was killed? No. No. When you left the island, did you know Muff Graham had been killed? No. How do I do? Well, I'll have to do some interpreting. Look, I had a little trouble with one of the questions. No, which one? He asked me if I was present when Muff was killed. Yes. Well, I knew what you meant, but... I was on the island. Can you restructure the question? Certainly. If you'll excuse us, please. Day two. We could be in trouble here, am I right? Possibly. I think I'm going to need all the help I can get. Thank you, Vince. You know, us guys down at the DA's office, we get a little arrogant. So these humiliation sessions, they help to keep my perspective. Yeah, well, I'm glad I could help. After you? No, 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 winners first. They always have to go first. <laughs> hey, listen, you're going to talk to my friend? Eddie, I'm not a TV player. If I was, that'd be a basketball court. Why would I want this? I'm not talking want, Vince. I'm talking need. I mean, at least talk to him. Hi, Eddie. Mr. Bolliozzi, my name's Ted Jenkins. My sister needs your help. Eddie tells me that your sister already has an attorney. Len Whitehead's a very competent man. And Len thinks you'd be an invaluable addition to the team. He says it's one thing for a political lawyer to stand up in front of a jury and say, my client is innocent. But if Vince Bolliozzi, who put away Charlie Manson, stands up and says, I was a prosecutor for many years. I've seen thousands of guilty defendants, and I'm telling you, this client is innocent. That's worth something. Did Len tell you that I only take capital cases when I'm convinced that my client didn't do it? Or at least was justified in doing it? Yes. I don't see a problem. Jennifer, if I agree to defend you, I'm going to need your help. I want you to make two lists. Things you remember which might help your case, and things you remember which might hurt it. Can you do that? What do you mean, if? I thought everyone had a legal right to counsel. But it doesn't necessarily have to be me. You don't believe me, do you? Mr. Bugliosi, I didn't kill anyone. Are you telling me that your boyfriend killed him and you knew nothing about it? No. No. He couldn't have. I mean, I know him. It's impossible. So he couldn't and you didn't, but they're dead. Tell me what happened on the day they disappeared. We'd been on the island about three months. We were running pretty short of provisions, so we were getting ready to sail to this other island to buy some. Buck said that Mac and Muff had invited us over to the Sea Wind. And that was their boat, for a sort of farewell dinner. Buck had been breaking down his camp, and I was baking on the Iola. But we met up at about six and, and walked over to this little inlet where the Sea Wind was moored. Here, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No! <laughs> Ahoy, Sea Wind! Dinner guest request permission to come aboard. Hello? You sure they invited us? No, I dreamed it. Said they were going to try for Benito. If they didn't make it back in time, we should just come aboard and make ourselves at home. Buck didn't think it was a big deal. In fact, he told me that they'd said they were going to go fishing, and if they weren't back by the time we got there, we, we should just come aboard and wait. There were drinks and hors d'oeuvres, oh, even apricot brandy, my favorite. Buck dove right in. <laughs> We'd been living on crabs and coconuts for two weeks. Come on, sir. Try that. Anyway, uh, after about three hours, when they didn't show up, I was getting pretty freaked. I wanted to go and look for them right then, but... 
Buck said they probably just got hung up someplace and then had to sleep the night on the beach. And when besides it was dark. It was dark. Pitch black. Anyway, Buck was drunk. Search in the dark, we just get lost ourselves. Relax, baby. They probably just went outside the reef and had trouble getting back. I finally fell asleep a couple of hours later, but at first light, I, I woke up Buck and, 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 we, and we started to search. It didn't take us long. After about an hour, we found it. It was their dinghy. Flipped over on the sand, like it had drifted up with the tide. Buck said they, they must have had an accident in the laguna and the sharks had gotten to them. Search for four days, but found a trace of them. Jennifer, there were four people on a little tiny island. Two of them disappeared. One turned up as a bunch of bones in an aluminum box. The other two ended up in Hawaii on a boat stolen from the victims. Before I agree to defend you, you're going to have to explain to me why those numbers don't add up to cold-blooded murder. to believe she killed anyone. She just seems, well, nice. She's perfectly plausible. I just can't get the arithmetic out of my head. Four people on a tiny little island. Two of them disappear and the other two end up in Hawaii with their boats. Four minus two equals two. What was that last thing you said? I said two from four leaves two, not one. I just can't figure out how he could have killed them without her knowing about it. Well, maybe this is one time you can't be 100% sure. And the victim's body was broken up or cut up so the killer could stuff it into a metal box. And there was some evidence that her face was burned with an acetylene torch. Mm. She took a lie detector test? Yeah. Yeah, she scored a plus seven. So she's telling the truth? Yeah, sort of. It's kind of a sliding scale between plus six and minus six is in the gray area. Truthful goes up to plus 30. So a plus seven is right on the border of truthful. God, you've got knots on your knots. Yeah, I like the fact that she wouldn't put the head on her boyfriend. If she were guilty, she'd have jumped at the chance when I gave it to her. She didn't. She almost came unglued. Well, then. And she did offer to take the polygraph test and let the jury hear the results. I don't know, there's still something Something wrong, something missing. Evening, Vince. Evening, Lynn. Backpack, huh? Yeah, I like them. I can keep my hands free. Oh. Nice tie. Oh. No, please. No, go ahead. No, please. Well, in case we get bored? <laughs> it was just in there. So it's understood. If we're going to work together, mm -hmm. you handle the forensic stuff and the experts, and I'll deal with Jennifer. Well, are we going to work together? Do you believe her? As much as I need to. Can you give me a couple more days? Yeah, sure, no problem, whatever you need. Listen, I want you to get to know Mac and Muff better, so I got the discovery documents from the prosecution. That'll be enough to start you off with. Basically, it's a statement from Mac's sister, Kit. Racing sushi. <laughs> of course. In the early 70s, Mac, Muff, George, and I were all living in San Diego. George and I were suburbanites. Mac and Muff lived on their boat to sea wind. It was a beautiful thing. Mac's pride and joy. 
But I can tell you right now, if it had been Muff's choice, they'd probably been down the street from us in some nice, quiet, boring little ranch style on firm, solid ground. You know, there's a really cute home for sale two streets over from us. No, no, really. And George was saying just the other day, Max been with Convair, what is it, about seven months now. Maybe... Maybe he's tired of deep water sailing and maybe we can live like a normal couple. Oh, stranger things have happened. Not to your brother, they haven't. Sometimes I prefer to think of him strictly as your husband, thank you. Hello! Ahoy, matey! Well, what are you doing home so early? That's it? No kiss? No congratulations? Congratulations for what? Well, I got great news. <laughs> Honey, you remember when I went to work for Convair? Yeah. April, it was in April, and the I... Ah! Ah! I thought it was in May. When I realized I'd been sitting at that damn drafting table a month more than I needed to, I thought, Skipper, you're losing it. So I got up and walked right into Tillman's office, and I looked him right in the eye, and I told him the truth. Well, in 10 minutes, he was offering me a transfer. I officially refused, and he officially laid me off. Sweetheart, first mate in light of me life. We're free again. Let's go sailing. <laughs> It's called Palmyra, about a thousand miles south of Honolulu. There was a naval air station on it during the war, but it's totally deserted now. No radios, no TV, no phones, just blue lagoons, white sandy beaches, and coconut palms. Our own island paradise. How long you figured it'd be gone? Uh, maybe two years, give or take. How's Muff feel about it? Buddy. If it involves packing, she'll be right there. Tell him. No. Tell him you don't want to go. If I tell him, he will go without me. Then let him. Sis. I would rather be with Mac. In the middle of a forest tan gale than anywhere else in the entire world without him. And that's the way it is. Stop worrying about me. Mac, I'm telling you. Come on, if she was upset, she'd have said something. We don't keep She's secrets. She's afraid. She is not afraid. Look, kid, I'm not an insensitive clod. But I know she's not that nuts about blue water sailing, not the way I am. So I haven't said anything to anyone. This is our last trip. We get back, I'm going to sell the sea wind. Want to buy some land, maybe up in the eastern Sierras and build her a little A-frame. Mac, Graham, you're not only an insensitive clod, you're a complete idiot. A cabin in the Sierras? How about an igloo at the North Pole? She wants to be around people, her friends, her family, movies, restaurants. Okay, okay, how about I build her a little A-frame in the middle of I-5? How's that? You satisfied? You tell her that this is the last trip. You hear me? You tell her. Okay, there's only one more to go. Oh, tell George Mag we'd like to borrow some of his sports magazines just until we leave. Hello. Oh, hi, George. Uh, Muff's here with the stuff they want us to store. Well, come here, big boy. Tell me you love me. <laughs> Give me a little kiss. We got this in Bali. I think Mac went crazy. He thought we'd corner the market. You know that call a while ago. How did you know it was George? I guessed. No, oh, you didn't. You. Well, what a big mystery. He lives here. It makes sense that he might call you once in a while. I do huh? that all the time. It's not just the phone. You say what I'm thinking before I can say it. Oh, you're being ridiculous. I can't believe things I have saved. Now, I don't want you to make a big deal out of this. But if anything should happen to us on this trip, I want you to have these shoes. What do you mean, if anything should happen? Uh, we got this in a little city outside of Rome on our honeymoon cruise. It's broken. I'm not coming back. Don't be silly. Of course you are. No, Mac isn't coming back either. We're not coming back from this trip. I know it. I know it.
yes, I can sign for this. That's not a problem. Uh, he's in there. You're late. Stop having to feed Puffer. I live in Marin County. That's 37 miles from here. I live twice as far. Somehow I got here. Yeah, you're right. I really appreciate it. Look, there's a park I like. It's about halfway between my place and here. Park? Yeah. Maybe we could meet there. I haven't agreed to defend you yet. Oh, yeah. Forgot. So, what have you got for me? I beg your pardon? The legal pad. Oh, yeah. The pencil. Uh, well, I've been kind of busy at work, and I'll get home, and, well, you know. Been reading about Mac and Muff, huh? Is that why you seem like you're ready to bite my head off? So how did you meet Buck? Okay. It was, uh, 1972 in Hawaii. It was, uh, June. Yeah, because I broke up with my boyfriend over Memorial Day. It was, uh, King Kamehameha Day, and I was going to this party. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Jimbo, some kid's monkeying with your bike. How you doing? I'm Buck. Jennifer. Hey. Noticed you a while back. I noticed you noticing me. Uncle's got this roofing company out of Hilo. I work for him. Doing what, the books? Oh, man, roofing, you know. <laughs> Doing the roofs. Hots, tarmac, shingles. Except it's breaking my back. <clears throat> How about you? Construction. I'm working on a place back in the hills. Mm. Don't. It's not fair. See, I just broke up with my boyfriend. Gee, that's too bad. I need to be alone for a while. Because the guys I pick... Yeah, what do they like the guys you pick? You know what passive-aggressive means? Passive what? <laughs> I may build houses, but I have read a book or two. You mean losers who get what they want by making you feel sorry for them. So they make you as weak as they are, then they turn around and smack you. I always pick those guys, and I'm sick of them. So? So if I picked you, you gotta be one of them. But you didn't pick me. I picked you. I never did that. <laughs> no, I don't mean I never did it. I mean I never did that. I mean it's never been like that before. It's a great kahuna. Mm-mm. You're the great kahuna. And you just drop into my life, huh? Where'd you come from anyway? I'm a refugee. Yeah? Refugee from what? Noise, traffic, people. <laughs> Small rooms with bars on the windows. You in prison? Yep. What for? Held up a gas station with a gun that wasn't even loaded. I was 19. Where were you? San Quentin.
You still alive in that? I ain't ever going back, if that's what you mean. Well, Mom, I better close. If I sound happy, it's because I am. Buck took over my roofing job, thank God, and I'm waitressing at the island surf. Buck's a dream. He's totally different from the jerks he used to complain about. He's strong, but he's gentle and considerate, too. I'm crazy about him. Fun, a little, uh, little reunion, maybe a little action, huh? All right, man. Come on in, let's get loaded. Hey, honey. Hey, I got some beers, will you? Somebody's hand. Come on. Yeah, let's go. All right. Hey, honey, did you, did you guys meet my old lady, Daryl Georgie? This is Jennifer. Babe, what's your name? I'm Carla. All right, Carla. Denise. Hi, Denise. How are you doing? Who bailed us out? My brother. Who else? Jeez, Buck, that was awful. Even one night. I ain't gone back. You won't have to, baby, I promise. The lawyer thinks if you plead guilty, he can get the DA to drop all but one charge against you. Maybe drop the accessory thing against me entirely. Buck, you're not listening. No deal. <laughs> it's the best deal you're gonna get, Buck. Look, I'll enter a guilty to get you off, but I ain't going back either. You can do federal time standing on my head, but I'm on parole in California. This will be a violation. I'd rather die than go back to San Quentin. What are we gonna do with him, baby? Doesn't have to be we. You can cop to the DA. Split. Do whatever you want. Gee, Buck. It's not fair. We're not talking fair. You gotta realize if you're gonna hang with me, baby, there's no deal, no compromise, no plea. There's just gonna be the two of us. How much money you got left? About two grand, but I promised the lawyer. And what about the bail money, Buck? My brother's not a rich man. I'll pay him back every penny. I'm gonna get us a boat, fix it up, and just point south. <laughs> Buck. What do you know about boats, huh? Some. What I don't know, I'll learn. You'll learn. I can fix anything, you know that.
Look, honey. I don't do too good in cities. Sometimes I'm a jerk, I know that, but... I see a guy like Daryl and I get real tempted. So we'll go where there are no people, no narcs, no drugs, I promise. I know this deserted little island, it's called Palmyra. It's paradise, just blue water, white sand, and cocoa palms. We'll live off the land, just you and me. Be more than plenty. What do you say? Basket of gamma, where the hell are we? As far as I can tell, somewhere in Norway. Baby, I'm never gonna get this. Oh, you're doing a great job. Man, it, baby. How am I gonna find a little island when I can't even find Hawaii and we're not even moving? <laughs> I don't know. Come on back. Never thought you'd see the day, huh, suckers? All right. All right, slow down. Slow down! Slow it down! Stop! Forget it. It's not that serious. I said forget it. It's firewood. You had to change the name, didn't you? I told you it was bad luck. The whole thing's heck. No, it's not, and you're not giving up. I bet everything I have on you, and you're not thinking out on me. You hear me? All right! You win. You'll be breaking the law. Mom, Buck pleaded guilty and they dropped the charge against me. You'll be a fugitive, so you'll be one too. What kind of a life will you have always running? I told you, we're going someplace. We won't have to worry about that. Maybe you think about this. Think about what you're doing. I have thought about it, Mom. Have you? What do you know about him? Ted, all I need to know. He told you he went to prison on a sort of comic opera armed robbery with an unloaded gun, right? Yeah. And there were a couple of parole violations that were only technicalities. Right. Did he happen to mention that he was first arrested when he was 12? That he escaped twice from a juvenile detention home? That he was convicted of car theft, joyriding, and burglary? That's all before he was 16. I mean, that's just the first page. There are three more. Jen. Jen. <laughs> Jen, are you still there? Yeah. Jen, seven years ago, he was committed to a hospital for the criminally insane. I lied, eh? I know about that, Ted. He was only faking so he wouldn't be sent back to St. Quentin. Sweetheart, I'm afraid if you go out on the ocean, you'll never come back. I will, Mom. I will, I promise. Look, I know Buck's done bad things, but I love him, Mom. I love him like crazy, and 
And there's good in him. I can bring it out. I can change him. I know I can. I guess in the end I couldn't, but it looked different then. Paradise was waiting, we were in love, and nothing was gonna stop us. Vince? Buck Walker, another? No. No. No, I don't think so. I'm glad it's not your job to prosecute him. I almost wish it was. It'd be a lot easier than defending his girlfriend. You all right? Yeah. I just get uneasy sometimes. Charlie Manson can't hurt us. He can't hurt us. He'll never get out of prison. He doesn't have to get out. He manipulates people. He gets them to do what he wants. Is that how it was with Jennifer? I honestly don't know. Is she innocent? Is she innocent? That's precisely the question. If she is innocent, can you help her? The only way I can think to defend her is to prosecute him. It's funny. Come to bed, honey. It's late. In a minute. Bugliosi. I'm calling you at some ungodly hour Thursday morning. If the offer's still open on the Jennifer Jenkins matter, you've got yourself a co-counsel. Thanks for meeting me here. Look, help. Uh, good news. We got our change of venue. Hawaii's out. We're going to be in our own backyard. And you and Buck are going to have separate trials. Great. How's he doing? You heard anything? No, not happening. Come on, let's walk a little. OK. The bad news is we got Judge King again. I think the only reason he picked San Francisco is because he's an opera buff. Season started. Great. I read the transcript that you're both have trial. The judge thought you were guilty, and let the jury know it. Get another judge. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. I can't. Sure you can. You can do anything. That's why I hired you. Got any notes for me? Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll do it tonight.
means exactly the way the book says, and it's still screwed up. It can't be lost the very first day. I gotta lie down. You okay? <clears throat> Didn't you take the drum me? Pills won't help. They won't now. United States versus Buck Dwayne Walker, Around the bend was a sea wind. Its refrigerator chest, full of delicacies they hadn't tasted for months. There were literally thousands of coconut palms. There were fish. There were land crabs so huge you'd pay an arm and a leg for them in your local supermarket. No one was going to starve to death on this island. Mr. Billington, this is an opening statement, not a closing argument. You get to argue the case later. Mr. Shoemaker. Will you describe the circumstances under which you first met Mac and Muffgram? Well, uh, of course, I'd, uh, I'd known Mac for years over our ham radio network. But uh, face to face was when they came into Hawaii on the way to Palmyra. I mean, my wife were waiting at the marina when they came through the channel. Hey, hey! Hello! Hey! Great. All right. Well, if it ain't old N6ETE. And you must be Charlie Uniform Romeo Tango. The very same. <laughs> Funny, I bet my wife you'd be short and fat. He did not. <laughs> How was your crossing? Great. Rough. So we're on our honeymoon cruise off the coast of Morocco, and we'd heard some reports of pirates that like to ram their targets, kill the owners, and set them adrift. So it's about 2 in the morning, and uh, it's foggy as hell. I got the watch. And I hear an engine, and I can make out something barely in the distance. It's a trawler coming right at us. So I turn, the trawler turns, I turn, the trawler turns again. Okay, it's them. So I yell down for Muff to uh, bring up the rifle, M16, Army issue, and I tell her, what I tell you? No, nope, it's your story. You do the line. What line? Was there a trawler or not? Oh, God help us, there was a trawler. You're heading right for us. And I tell her, you take the helm and don't turn away no matter what happens. And I make her swear. You did. You made me swear. Yeah, and I jump up on the cabin to turn on the floods so the captain can see us. And I aim that M16 right down his throat and I don't move. And Muff, bless her heart, doesn't turn so much as a point. Well, by this time, we're closing pretty fast. 30 yards, 20, and 15, and I can feel my own sweat. Well, at 10 yards. Captain loses it. Swerves and misses us by this much. We never saw him again. Okay. If the trawler hadn't have turned, would you have fired? Huh? You bet he would have. And if he'd been the skipper of the trawler, he never would have turned away. He'd be dead. Kenwood rig with filters, RF speech processor, dual VFO. Nice. Yeah. 
Got a less powerful rig in the boat, but this one's state of the art. Listen, uh, it might be a good idea to set up a link between here and Palmyra, say once a week. Oh, Muff would love that. You know, she gets spooked if she can't stay in touch with her family. I remember thinking to myself as they sailed away, there go two of the nicest people I ever met. And I figured one day I'd see them come sailing back. It's still hard for me to accept the fact that they're gone for good. I just can't believe it. Stunning. It's a place to work. Would you rather I rented the presidential suite at the Fairmont? You're paying for it. How's it going? Terrible. King is convinced that Buck's guilty as hell. Clobbers his attorney every chance he gets. The jury's losing all respect for him. What are you gonna do if he does that to you? I don't know. And I'll tell you one thing. I'm gonna concede that Muff was murdered. What? In your trial. I'm not going to make any pretense of an accident or anybody being eaten by sharks. Our theory's going to be that Buck murdered Mac and Muff and you knew nothing about no. it. No! Well, Jennifer, that's what you told me. I didn't! He didn't... Now, you listen to me. If I defend you the way Billington's defending Buck, you're going to spend the rest of your life in prison. Buck couldn't do a thing like that. I would have known. No, I don't want to hear that. That's exactly what I have to convince the jury is not true, that you didn't know, because you didn't want to know. You still don't know. Get this straight, Vince. It didn't happen, but didn't do it, and you can't prove he did. What's your favorite drink? <sighs> What's that got to do with anything? Just answer the question. Apricot brandy, you know that. You asked me before. What about Mac and Muff? Did they know? No. You sure? Yes, I got a headache, Vince. Let's did Buck know? Did Buck know what? Your favorite drink. Of course! The night Mac and Muff disappeared, you went to their boat for dinner. And you said, well, these are not your exact words, but it's close enough. You said that Muff had put out some hors d'oeuvres, some cheese and crackers, dry roasted peanuts, some vodka, and a bottle of apricot brandy. Now think about that. Apricot brandy. Not a very common drink. On the sea wind. On a tray, just for you. Who put it out? When? to do I took navigational readings again and again but I still couldn't figure out where we were it all seemed like a blur of choppy seas sleepless nights and general nausea pretty discouraging all in all but the weather had been in our favor until one cloudy morning oh you must be feeling better if you can eat a little how about giving me a hand we're wasting good wind baby I'm as weak as a kitten The mainsail was still stuck, and I didn't have the strength to work it loose by myself. I was fiddling with it for the umpteenth time. It was so sudden. The sky just, just closed up. One minute the sun was shining, and the next it was pitch black, and... Just like that, we were in serious trouble. Damn it, Buck, help me!
shut up and hold still. You know, bite my head off. Put a safety line on next time, okay? Yes, mother. You know, it's kind of weird. My gut feels better. How's it feel now? Wow. <laughs> hey! Sixteen oh four and twenty seconds. Right. I'm going to give this one last try. <laughs> I think I did it. I've been using the wrong stupid day. See, after two o'clock on this longitude, it becomes the next day in Greenwich, which means I've been using the wrong table since day one. So look at this. Here's Palmyra. Here we are. If we come twenty degrees to starboard, we'll be heading right for it. We did it, honey. All right, you did it. You just call me Columbus from now on. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so, Jennifer, it was rough out there. The boat was leaky but reasonably seaworthy, and you finally discovered you were right on course. How many days before you spotted land? Eighteen. It's a pretty great feeling. One minute we were a dot on the map with a lot of ocean around us, and the next minute... <laughs> well, I guess you'll never know the thrill of spotting land that have been lost at sea. Land ahoy! Fuck, get up here! My name's Roy Allen. Don't slip up. Who cares out here? I ain't taking any chances. Roy Allen. I thought the whole idea of coming out here was to get away from all that stuff. Roy. Besides, what are you going to do about that? Roy. Nickname? <laughs> Appreciate your help. All right, well, it's full of seawater. Yeah, I'm glad we were here. We're leaving day after tomorrow. Heading back to Maui. So you'll have the place all to yourselves. Good. Maybe not. Looks like we're turning into Grand Central Island. It was a beautiful sight. Buck seemed hypnotized by it. Look at that. The sea wind was the kind of boat that could easily sail around the world. And Mac and Muff seem capable of doing just that. Hello. How's it going? Hi. Hi. Well, excuse me if I look surprised. I uh, didn't think we'd have enough people here for a soccer team. <laughs> <laughs> We're leaving day after tomorrow. Mm. Oh. You look like a man who needs a smoke. I uh, know, thanks, Buck. I mean, Roy's given up smoking. Great. Anyway, guided tour starting now, if anyone's interested. Yeah, it'd be great. Well, we better take a rain check. We got some digging in to do, huh? Kids and I have to pack, honey. Kids? See you later. For a little while, it really was paradise. The palm trees, the lagoon, the white sand. Maybe it was just the thrill of being back on dry land. Whatever it was, the sensation didn't last. Palmyra was hot and sticky. There were mosquitoes and bugs and mud everywhere. It was pretty stinky, too. It's 
still, it did have its charms. And Buck seemed happy and relaxed for the first time in a long time. A free man at last. Is this what I think it is? Highlight of the tour. Been here for years. Don't know who rigged it up, but it works. Come here, baby. The government calls Dr. Oliver Harris. Dr. Harris, would an ordinary blow from a human fist have been enough to break Muff Graham's jaw? No, in order to split the jawbone from the skull, as this one was, would require tremendous force, as, say, a sledgehammer or a ball-peen hammer. Dr. Harris, you say there's evidence that Muff Graham's skull was burned. Could an acetylene torch have caused the burning? Yes. Agent Shishido, can you identify this object? This looks like the torch we found aboard the sea wind. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Dr. Stevens, I show you this box and ask you, if the bones had not been broken, would the body of Muff Graham fit in this box? Impossible. Using chromo and thermotography, we found on the inside of the box traces of fatty acids consistent with the decomposition product of human fat. The box contained a tiny piece of faded greenish color cotton cloth. Which, when subjected to a phenophalian screening test, revealed the presence of human blood. Now, sir, let me ask you. Your neighbor at the time, Mr. Buck Walker, would you consider him a violent man? Your Honor, I object. Overruled. Violent? Yes, at times he'd be violent. Thank you, sir. Objection, Your Honor. That's overruled. Your Honor, I don't see what... Sit down, Mr. Billington. I have already overruled your objection. Your Honor, the government rests. Vince, I wasn't in there. Vince says it goes to jury Monday. So? I didn't take the stand, didn't testify. <laughs> Unbelievable. I want to be in the courtroom when the jury comes back. No. no. That is out of the question. Why? What's the difference? What's the difference? The whole idea is to separate you from Buck. What if a journalist sees you? Huh? Accused killer's lover in court for verdict. That's the difference. Jennifer, don't tell me you're still in love with him. No? Now, look, if you have a hesitation, that's fine. If not, it'll help your case if you could say that on the stand. Without hesitation. I just think he needs to see at least one friendly face. Jennifer, you listen to me. You stay away from that courtroom, you hear me? I mean, you stay away from that building, huh? Yeah. We buy you a drink, Vince. Right. From the start, life on Palmyra for Buck and me was all about getting enough to eat. And it didn't take long for me to realize that life in paradise could easily turn into a full-time job. Not a very pleasant one at that. Gorgeous! I'll bring you some. Great, thanks. I'm ice-watering already. <laughs>
on, honey. That's to take over to Mac and Muffs tonight. So bake another one. Maybe I'd like to do something besides spend my whole day baking bread in that sweat box. Did it ever occur to you? Nope. Never crossed my mind. Don't, Hey, Buck. back off. I'm hungry. You're always hungry. <laughs> Doesn't it bother you that we've only been here for two weeks and we're down to half our bread and flour already? Daryl and Georgie are resupplying us next month. Yeah, sure. And what if they don't show? Well, then we get your big buddy Mac to stock us up on tuna steaks. Sure. Hey, I ain't knocking it. He gets to ogle some young stuff, we get some fresh meat. Go on, put him down. But where would you be, huh? Big man who was going to give up smoking when the tobacco ran out. Where would you be without his cigarettes? Swinging from the palm trees, that's where. Man. way. Take oh, up. honey, yes, please take the Good. one and, and the basket too. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Can we tell? Oh, you don't want that anything. Thank you. Okay. And, uh, I'm going to just grab some of this here. Tasty. About a year, maybe longer. Oh. Do you have supplies enough to last that long? We're doing okay. I figure we can live off the land if we have to. Some friends are settling down the end of next month, bringing more supplies. So we're in pretty good shape. Your friends be staying too. Up to them. What about you guys? About the same. The year, at least. Any problem? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, 
Uh, let me say one final word to you. If you have any questions or you wish to see any exhibits, you may communicate with me through the bailiff. And uh, good luck. I mean, they're back. Well, they can't be back. They've been out, what, an hour and a half less? What can I tell you? They're back. Members of the jury, have you reached a verdict? Yes, we have, Your Honor. Will the defendant please rise? We, the jury, find the accused, Buck Dwayne Walker, guilty as charged. An hour and a half, Vince. And now here use the same evidence against Jennifer. Jennifer, I... You're next, Jennifer. You might have fooled your lawyers, but not me. Please. You're guilty. You did it, and I know you did it, and now you're gonna pay for it. Jennifer. 